Hey Shalom, this is your brother Yuanathan. Alright, first and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rekah HaKodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught us his truth and were well. I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and of course the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. Alright, may the blessing of election be upon your house. This lesson is uh, it's based off of two things. This was a lesson I wanted to do with the elder here in Dallas, Yada Ka. Um, we that had both watched the show Bel Air, which is a, a renovation of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, right? And in that show, the character Jeffrey, who's the butler of the house or the doorkeeper or housekeeper. Shaw Denton, right? How to handle the situation? <laughs> but how are you gonna handle it? I said I handle it. No need to worry, no need to trouble your aunt and uncle. The dynamic and range of his responsibilities how he has a pulse on all the psyches of the people in the house so that the house can flow smoothly. He sees things ahead of time before they happen. It happens. He's prudent. That character, that's what we, you know, understand a doorkeeper or housekeeper to be. And there's a precept that comes to mind. Uh, Psalms 84 and 10, I'll read it here briefly. It says, um, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand Okay, and I, to go with that before I read the whole precept, I'll read Psalms 116 and 19. It says, In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. So we, we're, we have insight into the mind of the Lord, into his presence, through Yahweh Shah, of course. Okay, continuing on back here in Psalms 84, 10. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness, because the dwelling in the tents of wickedness, the end of that is what? Death. But the end of the dwelling in the tents of the Lord is everlasting life, immortality, dominion, rulership, joy, peace, all these things, right? Now, it's not always a comfortable thing, especially not in this phase of our walk, being in these bodies, here in this kingdom that's ruled by the wicked. It's not always a comfortable thing, it's actually quite uncomfortable. But if we endure, you know, especially, you know, thriving in the responsibilities that we've been given here on this side, the reward is so heavy. It's beyond the comprehension that we could even understand within these bodies. All right? I want to look up that word doorkeeper there. All right? Now, you look it up. In the Hebrew, it's zapap. Okay? And it says to stand at or guard the threshold. The threshold means the door or the beginning of something or the entryway. Okay? Now, in this world... How can people even get insight unto what the Lord's about, what to look for, how to please Him, except they go through His men. Like it says in Amos 3 and 7, Surely the Lord God shall do nothing, but He revealed His secrets unto His servants the prophets. Now, that's to say that the men of the Lord are the Lord's voice in the earth. They're the passageway. They're the doorway to even having, you know, to, to, to witnessing the mindset of the Lord, how to please Him, what it looks like. They're the example. That's the pathway. You know, where a lot of people don't understand that. You know, especially the people who say, nobody taught me, uh, you know, I, these camps, da 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 da. Well, the, the Ethiopian eunuch, he said, uh, when Philip asked him, understand this what thou readest, he said, how can I unless a man should guide me? All right, but let's focus on the, you know, the topic, which is, you know, uh, the heavy weight, you know, of our position. So we're going to talk about the doorkeeper, uh, or, 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 you know, the household, uh, the housekeeper, so to speak. Now, I have five points, you know, five powers. I have five points that I want to dive into um, to illustrate the heaviness of the position. But in this lesson, I think I might just do uh, points one and two or just point one. Okay, because as I kind of put some things together and got a little long, and I try to keep my, my lessons between 10 and 15 minutes just because I know uh, <clears throat> people's attention span, especially in this time, isn't quite the best. Plus, that'll give you a chance to, 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 if you are taking notes, to break it down and to really get the fullness of what was said. All right, take a break, let it digest, then jump into part two and three and four, right? So, uh,. The first point I want to go into is administrative duties. Now, especially like if you're within the 
a body or a camp or a ministry, even you women, you, you're, you have a husband within your household, this applies to you too. Even the brothers that may not have leadership position, you may not be an officer or, you know, uh, you know, uh, head of a camp, you have a high position, but this mindset and these responsibilities and this wherewithal, this awareness, okay, of yourself and the men around you is, is very important within our walk, very important to your growth too, and, and if you have this mindset, the Lord will lift you up, He will, you know, if that's something that you desire, all right, uh, administrative duties, all right, the king's house or doorkeeper is a responsible is responsible for overseeing administrative tasks within the royal residence or within our ministry, right? This includes managing schedule. So, um, for me here in the Dallas camp, uh, I'm over you know the monthly quizzes. There's just classes Sundays taught for the brothers within the camps by agent officers. I combine you know the different topics, put the questions together for a quiz, and on that last Sunday, after everybody's got their grades back, we uh, we review the things like this brother may need to work on or always work clear on this topic you know what I mean and this builds the understanding it gives a platform for brothers to ask questions and to get a more thorough understanding uh, of, of things they might not have you know had hands on guidance with right intricate topics okay and it gives the uh, the men within leadership positions an opportunity to mentor as well because when you have a congregation or a ministry where you know you have people that are new coming in you have men that have been doing this a while the way you want to set it up is even for yourself if you can you want to have two people that pour into you two men that are you know people that are, has you know more experience to you they more experience than you they can pour into you spiritually according to the word about how to navigate life and the different adversities that you may go through okay uh, you want to have a person who's a peer with you where you guys kind of push each other to grow, keep each other in check. Kind of like when you go to the gym, you have a workout partner, you may not feel like going that day, but he's like, hey man, I see you, I'm gonna meet you there at five, right? It's, it's, it's the keep, you know, the push you. Sometimes you need it. Sometimes you feel low in the spirit and it's, the brotherhood is something beautiful to have. It's a tool to keep you in check. Then you want to have two people that you pour into, all right? That, that, those five, you know, people that you deal with on a regular basis. So if you are part of a camp that's big enough, then you have to try to structure your, your your day like that. You know, if you can, get some mentorship from two men that's over you. Um, you have somebody you touch bases with that's a peer, you know, and then two people that you pour into. All right? But, um, yeah, the, the, the quizzes here in Dallas, you know, in, that, in the review, it gives that opportunity for growth and questions to be asked and brothers to pour into each other brothers to push each other, you know, and, and for them to have more thorough understanding. So when they go out and teach on our way, our way especially Tuesday camp, they could, it's, they have more insight on the topics that they've learned about. Okay, um, to, to, let's get some precepts to actually uh, back that up. I want to go first, and, and really, you know, administrative duties and, and, and managing, what I really just spoke about is managing your time within righteousness. Because you want to manage your time uh, revolving around forwarding the mission, forwarding the will of the husband, forwarding, you know, how about you help shine the earth. And that takes time. That takes your time. In the kingdom, we're going to have unlimited time. But right now, we've been put on a time frame. And you are what you give your time to. You understand? So, you mapping out your day and being intentional about how you spend it. That's a that's a form of showing reverence to the Lord. Okay, let's let's actually get into that topic. Let's go to uh, Ephesians five, and we'll start at verse thirteen. And I want to read in the NLT here. All right, it says, "But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them." Okay, and the light is shining in the earth through the Lord's men in this time. Verse fourteen: For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, because before you knew that you were an Israelite, before you knew you were part of the regal house of Israel, and you had a standard that you had to walk in, you were dead, all right? So uh, the scripture in Revelation, their, their bodies shall lie uh, in the streets, their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Our people were spiritually dead. 
but the, the, the breath of life was breathed upon you, which is why we're here watching this video, and now you, you're walking in life, all right? You're no longer in that, that sleep or dead state, okay? Uh, Ephesians 5 and 14 in the NLT once more, it says, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and the Mashiach will give you light. So you're given that, that light to, to, to reveal lies and deception. Once you're given this understanding that breath of life. Verse 15, let's get into the point of this. It says, so be careful how you live, how you build. How are you operating on a day-to-day -day basis? How are you, what is your energy and your conduct like when you've been around brothers, when you're doing your lessons, when you're in your everyday life? Are you applying what you've learned? Okay? So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. Shouldn't be, don't be acting like a nigga out here in the world. And, and a brother in front of the camera. But like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of your time. Time is, is equal to opportunity. The opportunities come in time. Okay? Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. What, how the Lord wants you to spend your time. Now, I went and looked at the, uh, I got a commentary here. Sometimes I'll dive into the commentary and there'll be some interesting points. Or they'll articulate things in a, a very plain fashion. All right, and I found something that was pretty spot on. All right, for the commentary for verses 15 through 21. Now, what it says is this. It says, another remedy against sin is care or caution in being impossible else to maintain purity of heart and life. It says, time is a talent. A talent is uh, a, something that's given to you to measure of a weight. So this is a weight that was put upon you. All right, the time that you were given. How are you going to spend that talent? How are you going to spend that time? Time is a talent given us by God. And it is misspent and lost when not employed according to his design. When you're not moving and using that time according to his will, right? If we have lost our time heretofore, we must double our diligence for the future. Of that time which thousands on a dying bed would gladly redeem, redeem at, the, uh, at the price of the whole world. How little do men think into what uh, trifles they daily sacrifice it. Men know it doesn't even cross people's mind that they waste so much time throughout the day that could have been used to forward the Lord's mission. And that's even us. We all need to be more intentional with our time and managing our day. Okay, how can I structure it to where you know, I can squeeze the most out of forwarding the Lord's mission? Okay, so like these lessons here for me. My goal is to I'll set miss, uh, lessons up like this and I'll have it structured to where I hit out, try to hit my bullets and I will take shorts from it and upload it to different platforms uh, take shorts of other brothers videos and upload it to, to multiple platforms and use that uh, list of hashtags that I use so that how was shy and the names and, and people come across it oh and maybe in hopes and, and it actually has uh, led people to watching the long format videos to actually go oh this this is a full like this is what I've been looking for you know all right so Let's continue on here. Um, it says, How little do men think into what trifles they daily sacrifice? It? Yeah. So now, one more precept, just to go along with what we just went into. About, you know, you are what you give your time to. Let's go to Psalms 90 and uh, 12. It says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let's read the same verse in the NLT. It says, Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Now, you look up the commentary on this, it says, uh, it has a couple bullets here. It says, too many lives, uh, too many live as though this is all. So a lot of people, they live the, the, their life in a sense of YOLO, right? And as doorkeepers, as housekeepers, we can't live in the sense of YOLO, you only live once, right? We can't, because when with that mentality comes the mindset of gratifying your flesh, 
Well, I just do what feels good. I just want to do what, it, you know, what, what gratifies my flesh, what makes me you know, feel good at the time. And a lot of times it's going to come with slothfulness, laziness. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, degeneracy. A lot of degenerate behavior comes behind that mentality. Okay? We are legacy minded. We understand that death isn't final. This isn't our first time here. All right? And Abarat is I. You know, uh, many of us, this is the last time we even have to taste the death. Some of us are going to be martyrs within this thing. But even then, we're going to be back in the kingdom and new bodies and perfection and have unlimited time. But we're going to be known by, hey, man, how did that man walk in the old world, in the old age? There's going to be rank and status in the kingdom. So you want to be building towards a proper legacy in the world to come. You see, a lot of people live... As though this is all, and this <laughs> could be further, could could be any further from the truth. All right, it says their plans and schemes laid out for this life only. Okay, we need to be conscious of our limited time and plan the plan for the eternal in our lives. All right, because there's there's, a, there's an eternity that that we actually have, and in this little peon brain here, in this mortal body, in these earthly vessels and chains of darkness. Most people don't see that. They, they, they don't think about eternity. Oh my, there, there, there's, there's going to be an eternal, you know, uh, legacy or status attached to my spirit. You know? The scriptures say for the righteous, their works do follow them. So for, you know, two-thirds of our people that were being wicked here on this side, you know, you know they're going to be perfect in the kingdom. It talks about them having their head down in the kingdom. All right? So... Live your life for the eternity, for the for the legacy, and that comes along with a lot. It comes along with feeling unappreciated often the time. Have to be okay with that. It comes along with not being recognized for the things you may be doing. You have to be okay with that because you're not building for the legacy and the pat on the back here on this side. In the immediate, you're you're building for your legacy, for the for the for the, the status and the, and the integrity. And the reputation that's attached to your spirit. Because it's going to be made known. Okay? Uh, that was really the main point I wanted to get out of that commentary there. Oh, yeah, I'll read this as well. It says, God has allotted a certain, a certain amount of days upon the earth. He knows your appointed time. He knows how your death will occur. It says, as he watches us lay out plans that exclude him, how many times does he say, thou fool, right, thou fool, uh, I require your soul this night. Yeah, man, so people, they're not, they're not living for the eternal, they're living for the right now. Okay, now, got that, that was pretty much the sum of point one about administration and duties. I kind of touched on, you know, whatever your, your lot is within the body, so for the, for the wise at home. You know, you, you're, you're, you're a housekeeper, you're over how the, you know, the house is situated, you're over how, you know, when the husband gets home, um, is his food ready, is his, is his bath ready, is there an environment to where, you know, he, you know, he makes his lessons at a certain time, is the environment during that time um, conductive to him being in the right frame of mind so he can just focus on doing the Lord's will, um, what, have, have, are the kids in the right spirit, are you echoing what their father stands for to the children. That's your job. You're supposed to echo the, the Lord's mindset, which he should have, and he's passing it down to you. You're supposed to echo that to the children in little ways. You might teach them a Hebrew word every day. You might, uh, you know, do little things so they could, they could think and view and perceive the world in a spiritual fashion. You don't have to just read straight precepts to them every day. You know, you might do that, but you, you create an environment and you have conversations and talks with them so that they can perceive things spiritually and it can apply uh, righteous conduct to their lives. How they deal with other kids, how they are when, when their parents aren't looking. Things like that. For the men, obviously, you know, brother, you, you, it may be your job at this time just to hold post. You know? And maybe you and a couple brothers, okay, I'm going to take this amount of time and we'll switch. And you do that, my, I'll hold a sign. You will hold post. You know what I mean? So, and it looks different from every brother. 
like for me, I gave my uh, one of my responsibilities, which is you know obviously quizzes here, um, like the, you know a lot of the media stuff, making sure all everything's set up, all the extra batteries are charged up, so brothers' phones aren't dying during camp and during class, um, you know those kind of things. Um, make sure all the audio and the mics are good, so you know the congregation can clearly hear the message that's being brought out those things so it's really all, all that comes with planning ahead being intentional how you spending your time uh, you know really just mapping things out for, for your day to be the most efficient that you can be to forward the Lord's mission see so you know that was just the first point there's four more points I want to touch on in this, uh, and I guess it's a series. Um, Albert Ratzizai, you know, this was edifying, um, and maybe I'll have uh, brothers along with me on the other parts, and might have some uh, some various clips for you all to illustrate those points. You know, because some people are visual learners, some people are auditory, some people they. They retain information when they write it down. Uh, you know, figuring some people are a combination of two or three. So figure out, you know, what's best for you at this stage in your walk, and, and try to retain these these uh, video pistols that are going out on the daily. So Abarat says, "Ah, the lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kudash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone." I want to say shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom.